Our guest today is Justin Rowe, who is a the co-founder of BlueBy90.com and a Michigan alum. Are you, Justin? I am not. No, I'm a fraud. You're not. I'm an absolute oh. fraud. So fraud. You, first, of, that, well, let's get that right out, <laughs> out of the bat. You can give me shit. Wait, can I swear on this? Yeah. No. Go ahead. No. Okay. I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, I I'll try to keep it light here then. Um, but yeah, you can. I mean, is it? That's like most Michigan State alum fans' like biggest diss, right? Is that like I'm a fan and I didn't go to the school? No comment. I've never said that sure, in my I mean, life. Well, <laughs> I didn't go to Michigan State, so like you know, here okay. we are, right? So all right, all right, and that's good. So it don't feel I bad. Just, I mean, I get the Walmart Wolverine quite a bit from uh, from Spartans mm-hmm. on Twitter, um, but I I I get all my stuff from the M Den, so it's not not from Walmart, but you know, it's fine. I'll take <laughs> right. it. I'll take it. I get it. I'm a fraud. It's fine. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, so we're obviously going to dive in uh, to a bunch of uh, basketball stuff coming up, right? Michigan yep. State, Michigan basketball, Breslin Center, going to be crazy. Uh, both are having very interesting seasons so far. Um, been interesting, I think, one of the more interesting seasons of, of recent memory that I can remember. But first, I actually wanted to discuss something that's been sort of on – uh everyone's mind lately right so like we talked about this earlier in the podcast but jim harbaugh has sort of been uh having a a, a, an affair if you will uh with some some of you know the nfl teams and i just kind of wanted to get like your thoughts on it and if you think you know sort of these like credible uh rumors uh you know where they stick First of all, so I am wearing the Big Dickinson Energy shirt. So I was wondering, I'm going to flip it back to you before I answer the question, which is who is more hated by the Spartan fan base? And is it Jim Harbaugh or Hunter Dickinson? Depends on the season. Oh, my God. (laughs) That's hard. I think I got to say that it's Dickinson because, I mean, Dickinson's so easy to hate. Yeah. Mm. He does. Dickinson does. I mean, Dickinson loves it. But Harbaugh is like, I feel like nobody wants Harbaugh to fail more than Michigan State fans. I mean, sure. I think I think I get what you're saying because I find myself, I often find myself, and I try to be like a very realistic person. Like I think of myself as, and everyone does. Everyone's gonna say that I think, right? Right. But like I think of myself as very level-headed, right? And uh, so I always. I always said that I never believed in Jim Harbaugh because, I mean, it, you know, my my whole thing with him was that he was brought to Michigan to do a few things, right? Like, he was brought to win against OSU. He was brought to win the Big Ten title. Just, yes, Michigan, you know, Michigan's now winning, ten, you know, 10 games a year. That in, in itself is, is impressive. Well, 13, 13. So I don't think I don't think that a coach like Harbaugh could fail at Michigan because he's so good, right? Like, like he's he's such a good coach. Does that I make agree. sense? Yeah, I, I. But I think like there are a lot of Spartans out there that hate Jim Harbaugh so much because. Well, there are a couple things. A, like, he was like lauded as a savior before he even like stepped foot on campus, right? So like right. he started off with the. So I think like they hated him right away. Then of course D'Antonio beats him multiple times, and you know, you could say owned him. I don't know. I I don't think so. But then also. Harbaugh kind of like drove D'Antonio out at the same time. I don't know. It was a good back and forth. It was a good back and forth. Um, but I, um, I, I think that you know it took a lot, a lot longer than than it should have. But ultimately, now, like you said, Jim Harbaugh is doing what he was hired to do. Um, you know, I will say, if I had it my way, like, let's be honest, Michigan. If you're going by the by the paper, they sh- like under Jim Harbaugh should be like seven and zero or eight and zero versus MSU. Right, like they're right. favored in probably every game, you know. So. It's, well, especially because of the later D'Antonio years, like Michigan State was not competing, right? right. Like you right. had, I mean, the 2015 loss was definitely warranted because Michigan State had a great team that year, yeah. and it was yeah. Harbaugh's first season. What are you gonna do? 
and, and but at the same time like 2017 that was a loss right or they had one in there something like that yep, but then yep. you add in 2020 2021 like those are just losses that that don't look great on the resume yeah no i agree with that and that was like that was i guess before michigan did beat ohio state and win the big 10 title like that was my thing with jim harbaugh my criticism was like i will actually give you losing to Ohio State because they're an absolute juggernaut, you know, like that program is unbelievable, but I thought there were some very unacceptable losses to Michigan State, and that was ultimately like, until they beat Ohio State and won the Big Ten title, like that was going to be Jim Harbaugh's demise in my opinion, but, you know, they go out and they win, um, obviously last year's loss was tough, that's for sure, to MSU, um, but like, now you go out and it feels like Michigan's I would say it's fair to say Michigan's trajectory is like on the up and up and, and Michigan States is maybe questionable right now. Um, but I will say what to answer, to go back to answer your original question is that like Jim Harbaugh flirting with the NFL is just blowing the momentum, right? That Michigan has like, and the same thing happened last year. And so it really like from a Michigan fans perspective, it is frustrating when it's like, holy smokes, you have one of the best years of Michigan football in recent history, and then immediately you get kicked in the nuts, and it's like, oh, my, our coach might leave. You know, and right. so it definitely, like, he has all the right to go do it, but it stinks that, like, you don't even get to, like, for 24 hours <laughs> enjoy that, the great season that you had, and you're immediately like, oh, my God, is our entire program derailed? Well, and, and, and that's the, that is sort of the, the problem with it. And like, and like Harbaugh is a good coach, right? Like, like I, I heard a couple Michigan callers, uh, you know, on the radio that were saying like, oh, you know, like Harbaugh's, you know, a joke, like whatever. And like, yeah, if you would have said that three years ago, you'd be correct. You know, like right. you, you would have some argument to make, but the dude just won the big title twice in a row. The dude just went to the CFP twice in a row. Like you can't, you can't make that up. There are, you know, that is essentially what, you know, winning the national title. Sure. That is definitely something that Harbaugh has yet to check off. But that is still a very, 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 like, big thing to do. And, like, Clemson doesn't win it every year. Alabama yeah. doesn't win it every year. Like, these are, you know, again, they're just there. It's getting there is, and then anything can happen at that point. It's getting there and then doing, you know, doing your job, essentially. So, I, I don't know. I, uh, I, I think that this is, like you said, it's just a, it sucks, right? Like, you just had a great season. You go to the CFP. I mean, sure, you know, disappointing finish again. TCU but like at least you have a QB who can grow and your QB doesn't you know isn't he still has a long way to go but like he's yeah. you know he's got that potential to he's got the best QB potential of any Michigan QB since I don't know Chad Henney yeah probably probably no I think you know you you look at it and let's like hypothetically say Harbaugh does come back and I, I need him to announce that sooner than later. Honestly, whether he's going or staying, he needs to announce it like right now for my right. own mental health, I think, actually. But, <laughs> uh, but the, for the sake of the program, too. Uh, but I think, you know, he, he comes back, and, and Michigan's probably the favorite to win the Big Ten again, right? Like, they, they have a lot of guys coming back on offense. There's a chance that Blake Corm comes back, too. Um, but when you have J.J. McCarthy out there and, and you have a lot of these guys on defense coming back, you know, I do, I do think that like the, this program for Michigan football is in a really, really good spot um, right now with, with Jim Harbaugh, you know, potentially coming back. Um, I have a question for you guys though. Is Tuck still coming? Sure. Yes. I mean, I, I think that, I don't know. I don't know what Sydney would say, but I think that like uh, it's, it's it's a tough question to ask. I don't think that it's I think that it's early, right? Like I mean, Michigan State had a had a incredible insurmountable season in because of one player. Like I think that without K9, I think that Michigan State is a 7 and 5 team maybe best, you know what I mean? Like that offensive line was was not great. That they had you know, 70 plus percent of the, of canines yards came after contact. Like that's just not, you know, that is not a recipe for success. He was, 
he was he i'll say this and i hope that your spartan listeners like this k9 should have not only been invited to the heisman but probably should have won it probably because i i think and this is my and someone thought i was crazy for this but i think that that bryce young and and sure like i don't think i think that that heisman in a in a way i think that there was there were better heisman candidates like i think that caleb williams should have won the heisman in 2022 right like i i think that i have that opinion but i also think that bryce young's season was better this year than it was in 2021 and so right. i just don't think that he was as incredible as people made him out to be so i would have put him as a runner up like you know what i mean like i just think that because of you i mean sure kenneth walker was a, a running back i think that that even even puts it into a bigger you know uh i can't find the right words to 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 say it but it's 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 even it just shows how big that season was yeah. Because if you are a not a quarterback and you're dictating the trajectory of a season, I mean, that's crazy. I've, yeah. you, nobody and, does that in the NFL or exactly. in college football. And, and, and I think, too, like what the Heisman has become is like you have to not only have a great season, but your team also like has to be undefeated and in the college football playoff, which is like that's not what the trophy used to represent. It used to represent – who was the best player in college football? And that, that doesn't always mean that your team is the best team in college football. And like, that's where to me, I'm like, K nine, what he was really, really good sometimes despite his team. <laughs> last right, year, I know, you know exactly, exactly. And I mean, it's a shame that like, like Ohio state's just a team that, you know, I don't think that, you know, there were, there's injury issues, obviously, that, you know, come with that. But even against Penn State in the last game, like, that was, you know, he still was out there competing and, you know, scoring. A t it's, he scored a TD in that last game. So, I don't know. I just, uh, yeah. I also like, think I, it, I'm still taken aback by that yeah. season. And, and also, going back to, to talk is, like, the 11-2 and two season almost set everybody's standards way too high, way too early, because, like, Let's think about it. If if they have the 2020 season, which we we pretty much throw it away, right? Like it's it was a really weird season, so we could throw that away. You guys get the win. I'll give it. I'll give you the win. But other <laughs> sure, than that, sure. like, we can throw, <laughs> okay. the, throw, yeah, the, throw the season away. But like, let's say they like Michigan State goes six and six or seven and five in that 2021 season, then like this 2022 season isn't as big of a setback. It's still like all right, we're building, we're building, we're building, you know, but instead you go 11 and two and then five and seven. And it's like a huge step back. So it was just like, it, it almost set itself up too high, too early. Whereas like, otherwise you would give him three, four years to figure this thing out, you know? And I, I think, think that's that any why... coach, no, go on, Sydney, go on. Okay. I think that's why I still kind of feel like I haven't given up on him yet because we kind of saw something amazing and then it was like okay I guess it is still a rebuild like back to reality I feel like I haven't lost hope yet and I'm not giving up on him because I think I have to give him the benefit of the doubt but I think you're right though that like disparity between the two seasons makes it easy for people to pick on him a little bit and pick on us because in the you know too right like right I, of course the contract yeah. makes it worse yeah. yeah I will say I will say that I personally don't care what any person's making i think that at, here's here's where i stand on contracts i think that anybody is worth what anybody's willing to pay them right so yeah, like yeah. so i mean sure right so like if if it, i think that it's definitely more black and white than people make it out to be right like like uh like I don't know. Take Miguel Cabrera. I would I, on the Tigers. I'm just going to switch sports for a second. I don't care if he's making two dollars a year. I don't think that he was worth being on the team for the last two seasons. Sorry for you know, <laughs> the, the, all the Tigers fans. I'm about to piss off, but you know whatever. But like, but the same thing about Mel Tucker, right? I don't care if he's making ten bucks a year, right? Once I think that once this this program's in a more stable position, I think that that's when sort of the judgment can set in because I. I think in, in 2021, you had a dude who overperformed. And then you have this year, you have a team who underperformed. So you have that sort of, 
uh, a, a contrast, right? Like, I think that, uh, again, like I said, Michigan State was a, a seven-win team at best if, if, they were, if they were without Kenneth Walker. And then, you know, if you have, you have this year where they could have won a couple more games, right? Like Indiana, that was definitely a game they should have won. They blew the lead. And, you know, there were maybe a couple in there, too, as well. I mean, Illinois was a surprise win, but still at the same, you know, there were just a couple games in there that they definitely could have won and not lost. And so yeah. it just kind of goes back to that sort of, you know, overperforming, underperforming sort of deal. I would agree with you on the contract situation, too, because, like, you know, everyone before before 2021, everyone harped on Jim Harbaugh's contract the whole time. It was like, you're getting paid seven mil a year to not win the Big Ten, you know, all those things. And it's like, he got paid seven mil a year because of what he's done in the past, which is get to a Super Bowl and go 12-0 right. with Stanford and, like, all these things. It, it was – you know, obviously he, he, you know, needed to, to do what he did in 2021 and 2022, but like he like earned the right to make $7 million a year because he was one of the most successful coaches of all time, you know, at both college level and at, at the NFL level. And now like he's, you know, we're, we're to the point where he really has solidified himself as probably one of the best college or one of the best football coaches in general, um, you know, ever. Um, because he's won at every level, so um, we're we're there. I I'm I'm just sad. I mean, here's the thing: re- the reality is, like, Michigan should be playing for a national title next week. Like, that's the no. Abs- I mean, reality. absolutely. I would 100 percent agree with you. I am pissed. Here's okay. So I think that Michigan should have won that game. I wish Michigan would have won that game because I wanted the ratings. Because listen, then now this is selfish. <laughs> But listen, because I had a great idea for a segment, and I was going to do if Michigan State won a title, would that what would that mean for MSU? You know, go on, make that. You know, sorry for the clickbait, but here I am. And but I, and now I can't. I also don't get to see Ohio State and Michigan in the title game, and that would have been the one of the greatest college football games in history, hands I, down. I agree. It also, like I don't know if I would have made it through that game, let alone that week, my heart would have stopped at some <laughs> point. Like that would have been way too much stress. Um, I will say I was from a Michigan state fans perspective Would that, but from like a, a, just a college football fans perspective, that would have been an awesome game from an MSU right. fans perspective though. Would you want to see like your two biggest rivals going up against each other in the national title game? Or would that hurt? I'm a hater all the time, so I feel like it would have hurt, um, but it would have looked good for the Big Ten. That's my rational side, saying okay. it would have looked good for the Big Ten, but my Michigan State side is like, no. I, <laughs> I would have hated it. would definitely be pulling for Ohio State. I, am of the, yeah. I hate Ohio State a lot, too. Like, genuinely. Like, I think that, and, and Michigan State fans hate me for this, genuinely. But my opinion is that I ha- actually hate Ohio State more than I hate Michigan. Wow! Ge- like genuinely, that, that might be the first time I've she, ever. She's heard shaking that her head. She's shaking That's her wild. Head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many Michigan State friends that they like they like they don't speak to me come like the week of the Michigan hate week. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had a um, <laughs> so when we were a fan site when our when our team was a fan site at, at SB Nation and we were doing stuff for the only colors. Um, I remember uh, I got a comment on one of my articles, and because I, I was doing I, I was doing a cool article, right? Like, like I mean, every outlet does this, like Free Press, Detroit News, like whatever. You know, they're doing these articles where it's like, oh, these are the best moments from the MSU Michigan rivalry, like you know, yada yada yada. And you know, I broke those down, and I, I felt it was fair to include both, like winning moments from both teams. Like, I just think that that's fair thing to do, right? And I did that, and someone's like, "Oh yeah, hate week should be on unso- or one sided, you know." And I was like, "Yeah, but like, you know, isn't that what still- keeps it good? I mean, that's why it's the way that it is." And I think, yeah. like, I love to hate Michigan, 
but that's because like they love to hate us so it's like fun i don't know that just it's yeah. part of it and that's how it I should be and this is a whole different discussion i think that it's it, like some of that stuff got out of hand uh you know with the uh the um yeah. you know the tunnel yeah. incident stuff like that like that that's was, obviously that not what i meant breaking point i feel what? like it's it's at least didn't you say, did being. you hear her say that she said she loved the tunnel incident which is <laughs> she, you no, said no, that? no 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 i said that's obviously not what i meant i don't ever want anyone to get hit with a helmet that's not what i'm saying <laughs> don't want but... to use, yeah i'm gonna buy a michigan state helmet and use it as a weapon on my michigan friend <laughs> yeah someone's will... gonna cut that out and it's gonna be posted <laughs> on the internet <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and they're I'm, gonna use it as a meme. That, I am will, gonna, be, all right. that will be the day. I'm I'll, I'm gonna transition this to basketball. Thank because you. Because we here's here's my my question for you guys. Mm -hmm. I think well, it's not even a question. It, I guess it's my opinion. The Breslin is going to be absolutely rocking on Saturday because. Michigan State fans, and this is going to be a little bit of a dig. I'm sorry, but like they haven't, they've only had this to think about for the whole month of December. It, while Michigan fans have been obviously focused on their team, uh, you know, in the playoff and stuff, but like seriously, this is, I'm trying not to be. No, I know no, what you mean no. because, well, because Michigan State fans have definitely transitioned to basketball, exactly. where Michigan fans just don't care. Like, I, even I, when I didn't Michigan think about basketball CMU. until like yesterday. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And right. So, yeah. So this is all the Michigan State fans have been thinking about for a long time. And obviously since the tunnel incident, too, that sparked like, I mean, both fan bases truly hated each other in that moment. And like, I think Michigan State fans like they're going to want and I know Tom Izzo wants to do it anyway. But like if there's a chance to run it up, like they will try and score 150 points. <laughs> You know, maybe, um, God, maybe, the, the Kansas maybe. Kansas State just put up a hundred. I think it was like one twenty nine or something. You'll have to oh fact check God. me. It was like one twenty nine, and Texas scored one hundred three. Like I was like, what kind of basketball game are we watching here? That's but insane. That's insane, isn't it for a college basketball game? Uh, but um, you didn't see the. Come on, the Michigan Michigan State has had something to look forward to since then. Michigan State played Michigan in hockey. We Ooh, had that. True. That happened. That's true. That's so true. didn't didn't we split though? We split, right? We did. Yep. Okay. That's how it happens though. That is college that is hockey true. for you. That is true. R very rarely do I ever witness a sweep. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, that I I mean that was that was there for sure, but I think that this this moment on Saturday is for be sure intense. like it is what what a lot of people have been looking forward to. And I think it's like I you know, for Michigan fans that have been like really focused on football for the past bit, like this is like, all right, basketball season's here. You're going to the Breslin, and good luck, I guess. Like, I'll be honest. I think, you know, if, if we're looking at this matchup a little bit, um, it feels like Michigan State probably just played their best game of the year last night. Right. Right? And, You're correct. And yep. I do think Michigan just played. They're playing, you know, I don't know when you guys are going to release this, but we're recording before Michigan plays Penn State uh, yep. tonight. Um, and we, but before that, they just played, Michigan just played their best game of the year on Sunday too. So both teams are playing really well. Um, I would say both teams have left a lot to, to look forward to as well, because I don't think both teams have been playing like top 10 basketball as we've seen both these programs be in before. So yeah. you're absolutely right. And, I, and, and Sydney, will, uh, j she's kind of our, our, uh, basketball liaison for this show. <laughs> I'm not a basketball person at all, but I can I can tell when when people are good and when they're bad, right? <laughs> so my opinion had for general purposes has been that Michigan State has had obviously the injuries. They've obviously had the um, you know everything. Uh, you know they had Aikens out, right? They had Hall out, and I. W we at Spartans Illustrated, we did a, an interview with um, uh, Izzo uh, just the other just the other day. I think the interview mm -hmm. came out like Tuesday morning or something like that, Tuesday night. And so we were doing that, and um, 
Izzo said that he doesn't even know what this Michigan State team is. Like, he doesn't know. It's not that he doesn't, you know, obviously he's the coach, right? But he doesn't think that you that anyone's seen it, right? right. Because, because you've had these guys out with injury for so long. And Michigan State did play, I will say, I know Nebraska, they just played an incredible first half. They played an incredible full, complete game. Mm-hmm. I will say, though, that I did think the two games against Gonzaga and Kentucky were definitely more impressive, just for the record. But... So that's, so that's kind of where Izzo is right now. I'm just giving that perspective. I think that Izzo thinks that his team is battle-tested right now, and I think that that's the good news, right? Like, you have a team who has played Gonzaga, they played Kentucky, they played Oregon, they've played um, a very good tournament-ready Portland team, which it, Portland's a really good... Whoever plays, if they make the NCAA tournament... Portland is going to be a tough team to play and Michigan uh, State beat them basically at home so uh, well not at home on the road well everyone uh, has everyone has always talked about the that Portland program just being a blue blood the, right I know yeah I, I, I know. I'm kidding dude I'm giving you shit I'm, no I, I'm, I'm kidding I, like, they are a good, they're a good team I, I just had to throw a dig in <laughs> um you could what is it uh uh shit who's the t- who's the team that you always want to see in the in the tournament the uh uh not oral roberts but the other one the the the, the god university out of illinois loyola loyola, loyola. loyola. yeah yeah they're yeah. you know anyone who plays some of those but that's valentine right drew valentine i think yes still? it is mm-hmm. yeah. he's you done good stuff I over there he's he yeah i I'd say I think he's the next coach at MSU. Once MSU there's wins there's been that's been said, and I think he's done enough at Loyola that has been impressive that I would I would like it, but I maybe not he, for like a long time because I'm not ready to let Izzo go ever. But ever. that's I don't that's think a different he's thing. ready to let go either. No, like, I just don't know. Which is he, good. It, which yeah, no. I mean, maybe I mean, Izzo hangs it up when he's a hundred. I don't know. Who knows? He can. I mean, here's the thing: is like if you know. Everybody is is exactly how Sydney feels right now. If you're an MSU fan, is like, you've got the keys to that place till whenever you want to hang it up. It's your call, yes. man. It's <laughs> your call. So. And that yeah. and that kind of was where, uh, and we'll get into sort of a little bit more of the breakdown. I just want to say one last thing real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of where D'Antonio was. So obviously hoping that Izzo is. I mean, I, Izzo is one of the greatest basketball coaches of all time. So in no, no, no. way. Would I ever think that, you know, Izzo's anything like D'Antonio would have been? D'Antonio was great, you know, whatever. But that was kind of the place that D'Antonio was in, whereas he was like, he got Michigan State back to a place it hadn't been in 50 years. And so, like, they were just like, we're never going to fire you. How, you know, you do you, do you whenever you want to stop. And then that obviously became sort of the detriment to Michigan State. Yeah, yeah no, I, I it was really unfortunate, like, as a Michigan fan, I hated D'Antonio because he won a lot and beat Michigan right. and also was, like, kind of a prick doing it. Like, he definitely <laughs> had some attitude to it, you know? Yeah. Um, so, like, he was he was hated. Like, but I loved – like, I think I respect him. And I love the rivalry when Michigan and Michigan State were going back and forth because it was, like, those were, like, top five, top ten programs going at yeah. it, you know, for a while. Obviously – Early years of D'Antonio, Michigan stunk. But you know, when 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 Harbaugh got there and things were were good, like those were you know that was that was a fun rivalry. And you know what, like that I I I like Juwan a lot, but like I will say, like some of the years of Michigan versus Michigan State in both teams are top ten, like the Stauskas years, like the uh, the Cassius Winston, Xavier yeah. Simpson, the. Um, uh, the Trey Burke, who was uh, MSU's um, uh, who was MSU's guard at that time? It was yeah. with Trey Burke in 2013. It was. Mm, um, it was um, number 11, Kalen, not Kalen Lucas. Yes, yes, I think I, think. I was, was a before. child then, but. I can't remember. Anyways, anyway, but those, 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 uh, like, that's what I want this rivalry to get back to in basketball specifically is like, both teams are like playing for a conference title, 
Um, you know, like in, in these games, like mean everything. And so I think Saturday is, a, is like one of the first steps to that. Um, you know, obviously both teams like aren't, it, don't have like a undefeated record or, or anything like that, but I think it's going to be a crazy environment. It'll be really good for college basketball and really good for these programs. Like I, I hope that this is a really good game. I, I really like, obviously I, I would never want to see Michigan get blown out, but like for the sake of like these programs and big 10 basketball, what I want to see is like a, that it's a five point game at the end of the game and both teams have battled it out. I'm sure that your listeners and you guys would love it if, you know, Hunter Dickinson had like five points at the half and, you know, you guys just go up by 30 and then start chanting little sister over and over again. And then like start yelling at Hunter Dickinson and all these things will happen. I'm sure that your fans will love that. I mean, yes, (laughs) (laughs) I don't, I don't subscribe to the little brother, little sister thing, but that's for, that's for different reasons. Yeah. I have some questions for you. Am I okay to get into some of that stuff, Brad? Are you good? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, we um yeah, we should pr- cuz I want cuz you you are more suited cuz I, I really want to know what Michigan's about. Like I really I'm really, you know, I want to know what the deal is with them, right? Like that's where my curiosity is at because you watch one game and they lose yeah. by they get walloped by, you know, whoever. Yep. Central Michigan, they lost to, right? They always go down to the wire with somebody, it feels yeah. like. Then they go out and beat Maryland by, like, 50. You know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. it's like there's no in-between. So I think that that's where I'm at. Obviously, Sydney's got more specific questions, but I just really want to. That's kind of where, what I want to know. Go ahead. Uh, do you want I me was to answer say, that or do you want to go with the questions? Go for I was going to say, I think with some of the questions, we'll get to that a little bit. Um, so based off what Brad just said, I wanted to know your opinion on Michigan's best win this year so far and their worst loss. I have ideas in my mind of what you'll say, but like with that, talk a little bit about maybe with, with their best win and their worst loss, like what they had and then what they didn't have, you know, yeah. what was missing. I, I think, you know, uh, to be honest with you, like there's only one good win on, on Michigan's schedule currently. Yeah. Um, and it's at Pitt. Um, yeah. the, the game against Pitt where they routed Pitt, and this was early, and this was like I think most Michigan fans, myself included, were thinking like, oh, wow, this is like a really good Michigan team now. Yeah. And and so, uh, you know, and, and now you look at what Pitt's done in the ACC since then, they're 11-4. and four. So mm-hmm. that is when Michigan, you know, with with how they're playing right now, Michigan is a bubble team probably. And so that win is going to be huge for their resume down the stretch. Um, but that was like a, a coming out party for Jet Howard, uh, the mm-hmm. freshman uh, son of, J- of Juwan Howard and brother of Jace Howard. And so that was where it was like, oh, Jet Howard is the real deal and he's going to make an impact here. So that was a really good win. They need to do more of, of that. Um, but I would say the worst loss – you know, a lot of people are going to say the Central Michigan loss. Obviously, you never want to lose to a Mac school. Mm-hmm. That is like, if you're if you're Michigan or Michigan State, that's like your worst nightmare is losing your non-conference game to a Mac right. school. Um, but actually, the game at Arizona against Arizona State. Um, so Frankie Collins was Michigan's point guard last year, transferred to Arizona State. So it was a revenge game for him. Yeah. And Michigan went out and laid an absolute egg. And so. That's where I say Michigan's uh, worst loss is, actually, because they showed zero life in a game that, like, they had, you know, actual emotion into. Um, and so that's what that's where I'm at. I, you know, I really do agree with Brad, too. It's like I, the same way that Tom Izzo sometimes probably doesn't know what team he has. Like, Juwan Howard has no idea what team he has. It depends on who comes out. Sometimes Hunter Dickinson wants to be a menace to society and throw up 35 <laughs> points. Sometimes he doesn't want to show up to the to the gym at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you I, it's funny too cuz like I noticed something in in a lot of Mich- and I didn't keep track of of the entire schedule or whatever, but it seems like every time Michigan State, I mean Michigan wins, it seems like Hunter Dickinson's out there putting up like monster numbers. Yeah. Right. And like, and then, and then if he doesn't, if he's not there, 
then it's like you know what what are you like there's no there are no other pieces who have who have really stepped up the way that hunter dickinson has and hunter dickinson it doesn't seem like he's been that consistent for them Correct. why do you think that's happening for him because he is a veteran player on that team i obviously have been watching them i feel like i was expecting more from him just from like a standpoint of being a casual watcher of some of the games and this season, I felt like he has underperformed. What about what, like an why is that? What about like an extension of that question, where like I want to know if it is, if it has to do with Michigan's strategy, because it seems like like I don't, and I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a basketball guru. I'm not going to break down film, but like, is it? It seems like he's not a shooter. Like, Dickinson's not, like, he's not, you know, he's not a guy that's going to go out and take threes. Not like Joey Hauser, where Joey Hauser's just fucking nailing shots all the time. I'll edit that out. Um, <laughs> but, um, but like, you know what I mean? Like, Hauser's not, you know, Hauser's going to go out and take threes. Like, Dickinson's a guy who's in the basket. He's a big. He's going to be yeah. right up by the basket. And it seems like he's been sort of um, not been able to get inside. Is that Has that been an issue for Michigan at all? So I, I I have a couple of different questions or different answers to, to that. One to answer um, Sydney's question as well is uh, I think a lot of it is mental for Hunter Dickinson. Like he's even come out and said it. Like sometimes he doesn't like feel in the game. Like he <laughs> he like checks out sometimes. And so I think that when he he like needs to be like this villain. He really does. He needs to feel like everyone hates him. And that's going to be the case on Saturday. And it like last year versus Michigan State at home for Michigan, when he put up 30 plus, like that was him and Tom Izzo are going back and forth, you know, and like oh, Hunter's man, calling yeah. him short, Izzo's screaming from the bench. Like that's honestly when Hunter Dickinson is at his best because he like is emotionally invested and cares a lot. But there are times when it feels like he checks out and if he gets frustrated early then all you know you can almost throw in the towel for him so i think the mental aspect for sure and that's going to be a tough mountain to climb for him you know there's going to be students screaming at him all game long can he have the mental you know uh, attitude and the mental maturity to you know get through that or use it to his advantage to power himself i think that's a big question um, as far as Michigan's offense and, and their strategy, I think that every, the offense does flow through Hunter Dickinson. They want to get the ball to him as much as possible, especially get it to him on the block. And I think against Michigan State, you know, I do think he's got a huge advantage if Joey Hauser is on him. Um, I think Matty Sissoko definitely will probably guard him a lot. But I also think that Sissoko is still very young and – I still think there's a, a size advantage, even though Sissoko's like uh, his arms are bigger than my head. But I, I do think that like I think that Hunter does have an advantage there. Um, but to your point, Brad, there are times where he, it becomes a black hole and they don't have an yeah. actually flowing offense. It's just get the ball to Hunter and go, go to the basket instead of an actual offense that moves freely, that moves the ball around to all their guys, gets other people involved. And so sometimes it's an advantage if Hunter's cooking, but if Hunter's not cooking and they still get it to him, that's where Michigan falls into a real rut. Interesting. So having... Who else do they have? Like, who else, like, who can shoot? Jet Howard is, is a one-and-done player. He's going to the NBA for sure. He is the best shooter, and it's not close. Um, Joey Baker has done really well coming off the bench. He's a Duke transfer. Um, we, we call him GQ Joey cause he's always got perfect hair. Um, and so he's a, he's a solid shooter. And then, um, there, you know, Jalen Llewellyn just had surgery actually on his ACL. He was the starting point guard that came in from Princeton. Um, so they have, um, gosh, now I'm like forgetting the, uh, his, his name. This is bad. You got to cut this out so I don't look like it. Keep it in. Keep it in. Uh, yeah, keep it in. Sure. <laughs> Make um, him look bad. Why, why am I blanking on our point guard's uh, uh, name? Uh, you want me to look Michigan's roster Doug, up Doug, for you? Doug, <laughs> Doug, 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 Doug McDaniel, D-U-G. Um, so Doug McDaniel stepped in. He's a freshman. Um, he's playing well, but he's still very, very raw. 
Um, and he's not really a shooter, I would say, yet. So um, he hasn't been able to like create his own offense much, um, which I think Michigan really needs that. Um, but you look at the guys that did come back that are playing really well. Um, I, I wouldn't say well, they're streaky, but when they're on, they're on, is Kobe Bufkin and Terrence Williams. Terrence Williams is a captain. Um, he's an inside-out guy, a very big, I would call him a small forward. Um, so he can he can shoot inside, he can go to the bucket, and he can defend. And then Kobe Bufkin's going to be a lengthy shooting guard uh, at the two. And so he's going to be a guy that when he is on, Michigan plays really, really well. But there have been a lot of times this year that he hasn't been on. Um, so I think that the, the focus is – if Michigan shoots well, then they'll be in this game. But there's a chance that Michigan doesn't shoot well, and they could they could be in trouble pretty quickly. So looking forward, I mean, it's hard to tell. When you go to your rival to play, you never really know what's going to happen, and that's how I feel when we go to Michigan. It's kind of always like the home court advantage, I think, helps either way in this rivalry. What is your prediction now, having not seen Michigan play against Penn State, because that's coming up in a couple minutes here for us, without that insight before they head to East Lansing, where do you fall right now with how this game will go? Here's my thing is, like, not a lot of teams win at at the Breslin when the Breslin is at its best. Mm -hmm. So my my prediction, as much as I'd love to predict a win for Michigan, I think it's going to be a tough task, honestly, uh, for a couple reasons. A, I've talked about the environment a hundred times already, so I think that is a big piece of it. That's why Michigan State's program is really good. They have an incredible home home uh, court advantage. Um, but I think that the way Michigan State played in their last game, it feels like they're clicking. It feels like all of a sudden things are going well. And if Joey Hauser can play inside and out like he has all year, I don't mm-hmm. think like Hunter's not that good on the defensive side of the ball. And so I can see him getting into foul trouble. And then all of a sudden, you know, things can unravel pretty quickly for Michigan, especially if Hunter yeah. gets into foul trouble. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, something that I asked the last guest that we had on, he was a Michigan State guy, but a similar type of question. Who is your most exciting player to watch on Michigan's team? Kind of for our listeners as they're coming and getting ready to watch this game, who should they have their eyes on on Michigan's team? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're going to hate watch Hunter Dickinson all day. I already know well, that of course, every, yeah, every yeah. Michigan State fan. So I won't say him. I will say Jet Howard simply because, like, he actually is very fun to watch on the offensive side of the ball. His shot is so smooth, and it is like – He's, he really is going to be an NBA player really quickly here. Um, and he's a nice kid. Like, he actually is not hateable, I, I don't <laughs> think. Um, he doesn't do the antics. He doesn't have a Barstool podcast where he calls other, you know, teams, fan yeah. bases, uh, mm-hmm. names, and things like that. And so I, I, I would, like, if, there's a, if there was one guy, if you're a Michigan State fan, that you're, like, if, if there was one guy at Michigan that you wanted on your team at Michigan State, it would be Jet Howard for sure. Okay, I wasn't gonna bring up that podcast or anything, but now that you now that you brought now it up, that you did. <laughs> yeah, right. You opened the door. What's your opinion on that as a Michigan fan? I wish he would put his foot in his mouth sometimes. To be honest, with yeah, you. because I it's like, in in okay, part of it he says it. He's like everyone already hates me. What what does it matter? You know. What's so I point, get that a right? little bit, but like I guess. it's like. You're also just pouring salt in the wound at all times and like yeah. just opening yourself up for more and more criticism. And it's like, I, I don't know. I just, I, I'm like, well, here's, okay, here's, what do you gain? This out is, of that? I don't know. Yeah. This is definitely a, a little bit off, off base, but, um, I, I feel like it's, and we'll, we, we could have an hour's conversation on what I'm about to say, but. I my problem and you you know with the Mike Hart stuff let's start there right like the Mike Hart stuff back in you know 07 whenever that was right like after he said that Michigan went on a losing streak against Michigan State like I just think that when you if I'm a Michigan fan I would and I don't know right like I'm not a Michigan fan but I'm just saying that if I was I feel like I would want my program to shut up Right. Because <laughs> yeah. if once you when you have like all this stuff happen, like like Michigan, 
Michigan State, if Michigan State has doesn't like if Michigan doesn't really stoke the fire every year and say like we're gonna whoop them, you know, run them up, whatever. Like, I don't think that Michigan State comes back in 2021 in a football game. I, I just don't think that that happens because I just, I just feel like Michigan gets to the point where they're, like, so complacent with their, like, I'm going to win this game and, I, and, and nothing's going to stop me. When it's like you have to work towards that, there's that sort of, like, talk before, you know, actually doing the thing. And, and that team's like, okay, whatever. Like, you know, you could say whatever you want, but we can settle this on the, on the court, on the field. I just feel like it's not good for the, the program itself when you're like, you know, you're kind of just um, opening yourself up to have a target on your back 24 seven. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, Michigan is really, really good at providing bulletin material, uh, bulletin board material, yeah. like at all times, like for whatever reason, um, and you know, I, the Mike Hart stuff, like, here's the thing is Mike Hart was four and zero and absolutely dominated Michigan state four years in a row. He had the right to say it, but did it screw right. Michigan for the next 10 years or whatever it was? Yeah, probably. Um, it, it definitely like, it always gives, listen, Michigan state is, it will always be like this, like chip on their shoulder type situation for Michigan, Michigan state, because let's be honest, Michigan alums, Michigan fans, everybody's arrogant. There's like no way around it. It's always been like that. Probably always will. Be. And it probably always will, right? It always will be. That's just going to that's going to be the dynamic of this of this rivalry is Michigan fans are always going to think they're better and Michigan State fans are going to say screw you. We've got a chip on our shoulder. We're going to go prove it to you that we're not uh, that you're not better than us. And so I agree with you like you know, sometimes I will say it feels like things are like taken out of context or like some reporter like feeds them you know feeds a michigan player like something like are you guaranteeing a win on saturday and the, what's the kid gonna say like no we're gonna lose like you know what do you want him to say well, yeah right right like, like the jj mccarthy stuff you know like i didn't think I mean, some of that was a little bit blown out of proportion he's talking like about his own team that he's confident in them and guess what they were 13 and 0 so why would you not be confident in your team you know so like right. there's that but like i think the the dickinson stuff on the podcast like does like sometimes cross that line of like okay maybe you don't need to say all that and maybe you don't need yeah. to rival rile up every team that you're about to go play <laughs> right. um so that they're gonna go you know 10 percent harder to to win to beat you um, when I, do I you? When does Michigan play Wisconsin? Because I'll definitely be watching that game. <laughs> oh, especially after everything that's happened. That's what Michigan I mean. Wisconsin yeah. Over the past couple of years, I don't know when we have them, but I mean, he did. Like, I will say this: so Hunter, like, Michigan played Maryland on Sunday, and Hunter went off for thirty plus, yep. right? And it half of it is because he's from the, the DMV, which is right there, and they didn't right. recruit him, and so he hates them for that. So sometimes mm -hmm. I wonder if he's like trying to spark this or in his own head to like create some type of thing where he needs to be the villain or something like that. You said, and I was just going to ask, like, because I just, I don't know, I just feel like it's bad for his brand as a person or a player to be doing this and then like it not working out for him online. But you said like his brand is that he's a villain and he plays better when he's a villain. So maybe... Maybe I'm just looking at it from the wrong perspective. Maybe that is what's working for him. Now that you're now that you've laid it all out for me, I have a different perspective on it. But I just feel like I agree with you. Sometimes it's like, man, maybe you should have kept that one to yourself. I, I think like yeah. most Michigan State fans like definitely are like, why what are you doing? Like this Yeah, it just seems wrong. But yeah. there I think there are a lot of times where Michigan fans are in the same boat where they're just like Hey, dude. Maybe, maybe you don't say that because yeah, like yeah. it's fun and funny and like it works if you're winning. But like mm -hmm. your team's eight and five right now, and <laughs> so it's like that's where it. You have to be like unbelievable and unstoppable if you want to talk like that. You you can't. Yeah. It it leaves it. What it does is it leaves like zero room for you to screw up. Otherwise, everyone's just gonna pile on when you do. Yeah. Right. Right. I agree. Yeah, especially so, on Twitter, because that's always what happens. 
I just, I kind of want to, we're kind of bleeding in um, a little bit up against it right now. I did want to, you know, five minutes from now, Michigan plays uh, Penn State, right? And we, you know, obviously the podcast is going to come out before or, or a, I mean, after, you know, the, the game's over. Yeah. Uh, what are, what's your take, I guess, and, and what, um, what, what does Michigan think? What does Michigan need to improve on for this game, and you know, in order to get ready? And do you think that they'll win against Penn State, who's uh, who's again another improved team? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think. I mean, we just talked about him, but like, I do think you need Hunter to probably put up twenty plus for for them to win and feed him. But I think you know, ultimately, what Michigan needs to do not only against Penn State, but to if Michigan wants to become a consistent team for throughout the rest of this year and win big games. They need to be consistently shooting well. They have been so – it's either they go at Minnesota and shoot 75% and win by 30, or they lay an egg at home to Central Michigan and shoot like dog crap. And so, like, you have to be consistent. You know, it's it sounds so stupid. It's like, oh, you have to shoot well to win basketball games. Well, obviously, right? But, like, they really do need to get some consistent outside shooting and not – because then what happens is not only are you scoring points from the outside, but the other team has to guard you on the outside closer, which opens up the middle for Hunter Dickinson. When they start shooting, then all of a sudden the passing lanes open up. I really would love to see Hunter go back to what he was two years ago where he was an elite passer. He was working the ball inside and out, and what was working for them then was he'd kick it quick and they'd make the shot, which then as soon as you do that, then all of a sudden it opens up another lane for Hunter. And so I think you know moving the ball more and shooting well uh, consistently is what Michigan needs to do, not only to win tonight against Penn State and on Saturday at Michigan State, but just – for them to be a, a true tournament team come March. Yeah, I would agree. I feel like, and Michigan State maybe has just found their stride in consistency because they had a little bit of a struggle with that for a little while during this season. So we'll see if they find it at the Breslin Center on Saturday. I'm not sure, but we will see. We will, we see. will see. It'll be it'll be interesting. Um, I I know. Like, here's my one thing. I I. My one ask for this game on Saturday is I can't I don't want to see Steven Izzo in the game. I'm sorry. I don't want to see Steven <laughs> so Izzo. So you're just gonna go on the record and say that you're a Steven Izzo hater? I I mean, I like I it's the it's the whole thing, the whole show. It's from a Michigan fan. I it's cute. They're father, son, they're having a moment and stuff. But, like, that would mean that they're up by 30 points and they're just shoving <laughs> it in our face. And then I have yeah. to see that little guy go on the court and, like, I mean, for, he's got to work on free throws. So I will he say. throws up his first ever points against Michigan. How, what a treat that would I, be. <laughs> I can't have that. Like, that cannot happen for my mental health. And, like, the, my, I know just my – the way my Twitter works at Blue by 90 – it will get dumped on if that type of mm-hmm. stuff happens. You'll see my comment come through. Exactly. But we'll be in your <laughs> don't take it personal. As they say. Exactly. Yeah. So you can clip clip that for them. You know, put it out mm-hmm. on your social media, and mm-hmm. then as soon as it happens, then everyone can dump on me. That's usually how this happens. Perfect. Yeah. yeah of course. <laughs> Yeah, it happened with TCU as well. I have like a million impressions on one tweet that I put out mm-hmm. about TCU in early December, and I've been—I haven't even been been able to tweet since because my mentions have been so flooded from it. So I'm, I'm wow. used to this. I'm used to this. <laughs> Hunter Dickinson should learn from you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. Maybe. Definitely. Maybe. Also, maybe. Also, I want. So you said you guys had Izzo on um, <laughs> for an interview too. So is. Is him and I like kind of a one A one B situation for guests or like? It wasn't like, here. It was oh, someone else from our team that inter- like interviewed him. So yeah, yeah, yeah um, we actually unfortunately so we, no. We have a uh, yeah. I wish I wish it was Justin Rose. They won't let me do the Izzo interview. So gotcha. he's, he's they Justin they brought Rose in a TV a, guy a for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, they brought in the pro for it. That's we'll get pro, there yeah. someday. And then we'll play this clip and be like, this is where we were. This, this is, is where we were before, before and, and now we're with Izzo. 
perfect. Right. Yeah, you could be like, yeah. Yeah. we were with that schmuck from Blue by Ivy, <laughs> and now look at us now. You know, I didn't. Yeah, they, I didn't say that. You did. They let <laughs> me edit the video. That's what they let me do. They let me be there and edit the video. I got to shake Izzo's hand. Hey, that was you'll it. You'll take it. You'll take it, right? I will take it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Of course. Love it. Um, well, it has been great. Uh, obviously, our lovely listeners will probably you can dump on <laughs> on uh, in the on comments Justin at mm-hmm. Blue by ninety. Uh, very very fun stuff. Got the big Dickinson energy over there. Obviously, <laughs> hope you know, hoping for a Michigan State win this weekend. But Absolutely. you know, who knows? So it might be. It might be. Who knows? I, we'll see if it's Big Dickinson energy on Saturday or Little Dickinson energy on Saturday. Right. You, you, you never know. You never yeah. Know, so. With uh, you know the the stereotype though sometimes you know makes me wonder if it's always Little Dickinson energy. So <laughs> you know. It's like the, it's it's like the guys who drive a F-150 big truck or a yeah. Dodge Ram. Yeah. yeah. I feel so, that. I feel that. Yeah. Right. Hey, go blue, right? We can all say no. that, right? Sure. Cut that out. Cut that out. Cut that out. <laughs> uh, Thanks I for coming on. Guys. No, I appreciate you guys having me. This has been a ton of fun.